Hello, Pascal. How are you? Hi, Daniel. Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, although I have to say, it's hard to keep up with all of the um, articles and reports that are coming out around the energy transition. And one thing that caught my eye a couple months ago was news about hydro being green-lighted for climate bonds. I wonder what that means to our business. Maybe you could give me a little bit more in concrete terms for us. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, for us, this is really amazing news at the end of the day. Um, it's a game changer. Um, if we look at the Paris Agreement, you know, let's just take a step back. You look at the Paris Agreement, we need to double um, the amount of hydropower capacities by 2050. Um, you know, and hydro uh, needs a, a lot of financing, a lot of investment, and that's always been the problem. Having now climate bonds um, is, you know, changing the picture because fundamentally you can now directly invest into these hydropower projects that fundamentally support the Paris Agreement. So I think um, the lack of having these bonds, having this possibility to invest for people in hydro through these bonds has been, in my view, uh, quite a bit of an obstacle. And I think that obstacle has now been removed. And I'm looking forward to this new era where people can really invest with these bonds in hydropower. Because I think it's going to really, you know, excuse the pun, but it can possibly open the floodgates. Thanks, Pascal. That was um, really helpful because I think we don't always imagine how those financial constructs impact our business growth. And coming from a technology perspective, it's always great to hear more about, you know, the sustainable finance space. And for sure, this is something that will help our hydropower business grow, but also just the world put into context where hydropower fits into the energy transition. Let's just two minutes about the big picture. I'm very interested. You know, you are the the CTO of uh, G Renewable, and um, you are basically having an oversight. Where do you see the role of hydropower in the energy transition? Well, I think you know how hydropower fits into the energy transition is something that we just frankly don't talk about enough. There is plenty of discussion about the variable renewable. Um, power generation of wind and solar. And there's even quite a bit of um, questions and discussions around new technologies like carbon capture or long duration energy storage. But we really don't hear much about hydropower. And I think it's interesting. It, to me, it reinforces the fact that um, hydropower is a, a long term, we've, we've had it for a while, so we don't necessarily think of it as fresh and new. And frankly, I think it's very underestimated in the public perception of what it can do and frankly, what it already is doing to enable the energy transition. Um, so I'll just be clear. I think from a technical perspective and from an operational and um, ecosystem around the energy um, perspective, it's a key component. It's a key enabler of the energy transition. Um, just recently, the International Energy Agency referred to hydropower as the workhorse of the energy transition, which I was pleased to see it referenced. And that term might sound disrespectful, but it's, you know, there's really a couple reasons why that's perfectly the right term, because it is it is the, one of the largest renewable uh, generation uh, sources today. And we know that obviously it's not growing as fast as wind and solar, but it's doing different things. So for a couple reasons, it's a really important part of the mix. Um, storage capacity is one. It has over a hundred times more storage capacity versus what we think of today, which is mostly battery solutions. And um, it brings a lot of benefits to the grid um, over the life of it. And the life of it is another piece. Typical energy storage or batteries will last 10 to 20 years with upkeep, meaning additional batteries added or swapped out. As you know, you know, Pascal, a hydropower plant can last anywhere from 40 to even 80 years. So just like the rest of the variable renewable space, hydropower falls into the category of being high upfront capital costs and very low operating costs. And most of the fossil fuel or conventional power generation or storage technologies are low upfront capital costs and very high operating costs because obviously there's cost of fuel involved. So hydropower fits within the renewable realm quite nicely from a framework, but it complements wind and solar in a way that um, we're appreciating a lot more now that we see higher penetrations of wind and solar where you need that grid support. 
so those of your team who have been working in this space know that um, we are the hydro plants that exist today are offering a lot of ancillary services to the grid, and not all markets reward that. It's almost like a service given for free, um, but balancing and stability, reactive power solutions, these are things that, frankly, the grid needs to operate and are becoming a much more visible um, sign of um, need across regions as we start to see more penetration of variable renewable. The flexibility of hydro is even more flexible than a gas plant, which is what we typically talk about as our flexible storage on the grid. Um, so there's a really unsung hero kind of persona to hydro, the way I think about it. Um, and from a technology perspective, you asked me about technology, the need for flexibility is probably the reason why I'm most excited about what hydro storage and variable speed technology that we've been working on can really bring to the market. I think it's in about half of our projects today. And that ability to respond quickly to the grid is going to make it the true complement to wind and solar. So wind and solar will grow maybe 4x and hydro needs to grow two times the size it is today. And that, um, you know, that's, that means it's a crucial part of our mission to serve the world and to help the energy transition along. Yeah, this is great. Uh, so I think there's a great potential. So let's go and do it. Thank All you right. very much, Danielle. Thank, Thank you very you much. Yeah.